Most conspiracy theories, especially the crazier ones, are meant to discredit the real ones. The art world is largely built around money laundering and tax evasion. This explains a lot of the really simplistic art pieces that sell for millions. You pay 10k for a painting, then give it to a college three years later. During that time, it went from 10k to 50k because f you, it's art. So you tell the IRS you donated 50k this year. And you can deduct donations from your yearly revenue and thus pay less taxes. The university plays along because they get free stuff out of the deal. Basically what money laundering is is that you invest your dirty money by operating a business and reclaiming your original money via the business's profit in order to avoid taxes. This can be applied to items of value as well. Buy a $100,000 painting that is less money you would pay in taxes, then go back and sell it. K-pop was created by the South Korean government under suggestion from the IMF as an extra exportable industry to fix its balance of payments. It really happened that way. I'm more surprised people or surprised governments get involved in cultural exports. Japan had some five-year cool Japan thing going on. Thailand sending chefs to American to popularize Thai food. It's a way to win the game, cultural victory. You want tourism and people buying your stuff, so you do whatever works. Government is actually watching everything you do. Now that doesn't mean there is some dude sitting at a computer looking over your internet history. But the government does have tons of information about you on a server somewhere. The paradox is that a lot of people in the government don't know they have it, and the rest don't know what to even do with it. Not everyone dismisses it, but the US government is still experimenting on its own citizens without their actual consent, but their implied consent. Fun fact, they legally can do this to anybody in the military, and did so to a group of marines testing gas masks against mustard gas or some other chemical weapon under the guise of preparing for Iraqi chemical weapons. Now on the surface this doesn't seem so bad, it makes sense. However, the guys suffered varying degrees of damage, and the doctors who treated them were, according to a few whistleblowers, ordered to remain silent, mostly due to the fact the doctors noticed that the injuries were not those of mustard gas, but a different chemical weapon. This happened in 2002 or 2003 I think, and a handful of the men died, with many more passing away a year or two later. I wish I currently had the source I got this from. But it's long since disappeared. Michael Jordan's first retirement was an unofficial suspension for betting on basketball. Not to forget the other part of the theory, that James Jordan was murdered due to his son's gambling debts. Not saying I necessarily believe it, but there's that part as well. Some agencies can turn on the microphone and relay the audio of most phones, even when you turn them off. Assuming you cannot remove the battery. This is why the president's phone as well as some other secure devices are supposed to have the microphones removed, and then have one plugged in when it's going to be in use. Previous presidents have begrudgingly accepted this practice.